This is a Gambro AK95S home hemodialysis machine um, that I'm setting up for my grandfather. He does um, nocturnal hemodialysis at home uh, four nights a week. And um, I set up the machine and uh, run the treatment for him. And uh, tonight I took a video of how I set it up. So hopefully it's uh, useful to anyone uh, that has this machine or a similar machine or is uh, considering home hemodialysis. So step one, we have uh, a jug with um, an acid concentrate, which I'm connecting here. And then the bicart, uh, just give it a quick shake. There's a, a powder inside, just to get rid of any clumps or whatnot. And that connects to the bicart chamber on the machine. So that's all set up, and usually while that's going, I uh, move over to just getting some syringes and uh, other supplies ready for the uh, machine. Um, right here, this is a, um, a vial used for collecting um, heparin, which uh, prevents coagulation in uh, blood coagulation in the machine. So you might get some bubbles in the syringe as you're pulling out the, the heparin, but um, usually I just give it a tap once, once that's all done to clear out any kind of bubbles in there. And you'll notice that um, everything has to stay sterile um, related to the machine, so none of the endpoints get touched at all. So yeah, there's a few other syringes I get ready. Uh, there's a, a cleaning solution there, there's some other syringes. So that's all pretty much ready for when we need it. And then, uh, yeah, we can go straight to lining the machine. So in this package is what they call the dialyzer. This is basically the, uh, the heart and soul of the dialysis machine. It does all the, the blood filtering. It has four ports on it. So we connect that um, on the machine. This package contains the, um, the actual lines that go on the machine. So that also comes in a sterile packaging. Uh, there's a little sticker with the um, package manufacturing number just in case there's some quality. Uh, issues, good to know which uh, package we're using. And then some uh, saline, uh, sodium chloride, large uh, one liter bags. We use those to, to prime the machine, which basically means get the lines filled with saline and circulating um, prior to connecting it to uh, the patient. So of course we're dealing with the sterile set up, so um, I have um, isogel, antibacterial, um, just to wash, clean up my hands beforehand. So we start with the arterial line, which is the red line, and so we're going to connect that to the dialyzer first. Again, the endpoints we don't want to actually touch with our hands, we want to make sure that uh, we're not physically touching anything that um, is part of the sterile circuit. So I open the blood pump door and uh, insert the, the thick cable uh, part of the, uh, the arterial line into the blood pump. Once so we close that up, and sort of follow along the, the white lines there in the machine, just sort of trace it out with a tubing. second sensor there. Uh, it's called an arterial pressure transducer. We'll, we'll get to that later. That's basically checking um, the pressure in the in the line. So 
that's the tip of the arterial line in my right hand. And we're going to connect that to the first saline bag. There's a spike at the end of that, which we use to pierce the saline bag. So again, we don't want to touch any of it directly with our hands. We want to work around it. So that's connected. We do the same now with the saline chamber. Then I usually clamp it off just to uh, get the flow of saline going. Uh, we don't really want air in there, so I'm just sort of tapping out any air holes or any, any air bubbles. That's all good. So that's all set up. I turned the dialyzer upside down now because now we have the venous side, the blue uh, pipe piping to uh, install. So that's called the waste bag. Basically all the saline that we're going to flow through the, the uh, tubing to prime the machine will flow into there. There's a big container called the venous drip chamber, which we'll get to later. That's uh, in my right hand right here. So we put that in. That chamber is called the, um, the priming detector that's used to detect for air and, and clotting and whatnot. There's a, an optical sensor in there. So when we connect the, the venous line to the dialyzer, and also the, the venous transducer is also connected. third line is the, the saline line, which we use um, briefly at setup and then also during the takeoff procedure at the end of the dialysis treatment. So we're just making sure that line is filled with saline. And so now um, our uh, wiring, if you want to call it that, is all, all the tubing is set up. And we grab the uh, heparin syringe, which, we, which I prepared earlier. Just giving that uh, a tap, backing it off to make sure there's no air in there. And just connecting the syringe to the uh, the heparin input line on the uh, tubing. So we connect that in. There's a little worm gear that drives that mechanism. So during the, the actual dialysis treatment, that uh, heparin gets slowly added every hour. I think it's 0.8 milliliters every hour just to keep the blood that's in the in the lines prevent it from coagulating or clotting uh, because the blood's outside the body for that brief brief period as it circulates through the dial as a dialyzer so we're all set up here there's a, a red line uh, along the bottom of the screen we need to wait for uh, the conductivity to uh, get all set up and so a few minutes have passed here the connectivity is basically the acid jug and the bicarb that we connected at the beginning. We have to wait for that all to mix. And once we get the green light, we can now go ahead and connect the uh, um, dialyzer fluid hoses to the dialyzer. So that's all set up. I unclick the arterial uh, red clamp there and turn on the blood pump. So now we have saline flowing through the the machine. So initially those tubes were full of air, now they're filling up with saline. So it's pushing all the air and we're putting in saline, which is sterile, um, so that once we do connect, it's, um, it's all basically sterile saline flowing through the machine. And usually little bubbles collect here and there, so you might have to give the hose a tap or two or, or shake it in the right direction. So 
So Celine, Celine has now made it all the way up to the waste bag, which is the end of the circuit. And uh, now we turn the um, little pump there on the on the Venus uh, drip chamber, just to raise up the volume of saline in that chamber. That's basically any bubbles can can bubble out in that chamber. And as I said, that plastic piece. Giving that a quick tap to uh, to remove any air, make sure that's all clean. That plastic piece does uh, air detection during dialysis. So we want to make sure there's no air sitting there, so that we don't get any kind of false positives during treatment. So I push the red button there to turn on air detect, and we let the machine prime. That takes about I'll say five minutes, maybe a little bit less. And now there's uh, the pump is stopped, and um, there's just a little bit of residual saline left in that first. So now that um, saline bag is pretty much empty, we don't want to get it completely empty, otherwise we'll get air back into the lines, which defeats the purpose of setting it up. So we just stop it just uh, when it's almost empty. Clamp that off, clamp off the waste bag. We don't need that now anymore until the end of the treatment. So this piece is called the recirculation adapter. You notice that I'm very careful how I opened it, kind of an interesting way to open it without touching any of the end points. These are sterile connections, so you do not want to touch these with your fingers directly. So once again, not touching anything on the end with my fingers. Carefully connect that. So basically now the machine is just connected to itself. Arterial, red, connected to venous blue. We turn on the blood pump. And then just open up that, that second saline connector just so that uh, it maintains a balance of saline in the machine. So the machine is just circulating on itself right now. And just flicking the tube in there just to get any air bubbles out. And next, the next few minutes basically is devoted to uh, shaking around the dialyzer. <coughs> basically, this priming that we're doing is basically kind of like a foam-style core in the dialyzer. There's a lot of uh, saturation that needs to take, take place. The saline needs to soak in, and we need to push all the bubbles out. So give it a good shake. Um, you can be pretty forceful with the with the dialyzer. It's, it's pretty strong. So take a few minutes doing to do that, and, and then once all the air is out, Flip the dialyzer over so that the red arterial line is at the top. And then reconnect it. If you do find that there's more air, just repeat that same process. Turn the dialyzer back upside down with the blue at the top and uh, just keep shaking away until the air bubbles out. So we've completed that setup. Now you'll see I'm pointing to a, a, a marker there. It's, it's the machine is doing something called the venous pressure test and make sure that all the sensors in the machine are working. Basically this whole setup is, is also a lot of automatic procedures that the machine does to make sure that it's working safely. So if something were to happen, the machine would tell you. So th there's nothing really to worry about from that standpoint. The machine has a lot of uh, checks that it does behind the scenes. So that's pretty much set up. Venus pressure test was successfully passed. The, I'm checking the rejection ratio on the, the WRO, which is, basically creates purified water for the machine to run on. And I'm checking for any um, chlorine that might be in the in the municipal water lines coming into the machine. Uh, you may not be able to, to tell, but there are three blue filters in the back. Those filter the, the city water coming in, and it goes into the uh, reverse osmosis WRO machine. Just to purify the water, just do a little check to make sure that uh, there's no chlorine. The filters take care of it, and the WRO takes care of it. I've never actually had chlorine make it through, but we do it just as a final precaution. And then um, you'll notice there's a user manual there on my left hand. Uh, there's just a few items that we just want to check. They're already preset, but I just check to make sure that uh, the time is set. As you can see, it's set to eight hours. Um, water removal, 
I set to usually two two kilos, two and a half kilos. I adjust that later depending on what uh, how much water we want to take off. But just various parameters, conductivity. It, these all sound complicated, but uh, through your training, you'll figure it all out, and we're all good to go. Hopefully, it didn't look too daunting. It shouldn't be. You'll uh, you'll get the hang of it.